Welcome back to another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. I'm your host, Gary Malefsky, and the publisher of Cyber Defense Magazine. Sitting in my hot seat is a very special guest who's solving a very important and critical problem in cybersecurity. Simone Petrella is the CEO of Cyber Vista. And is that at cybervista.com? Cybervista.net. Dot net. Cybervista.net. What is the problem that we all have in our bigger and bigger and bigger growing organizations when it comes to cybersecurity? Well, there's a few. Um, so technology is certainly one problem. But from my perspective, when you look at people, the biggest problem is that cybersecurity has now permeated beyond cybersecurity roles into the entirety of the organization. So IT roles have security components to them. Marketing roles have security components to them. Medical technicians have security components to them. Even sales representatives have security components to them. And so when you marry that with the fact that we have a talent gap within the cybersecurity defense realm itself, it just continues to exponentially get worse. And that ultimately puts the organizations at risk. Like our companies are at risk because we can't fill these critical positions. So are you training or are you finding the right talent? We do the training. So our goal is to work with companies around looking at their existing talent, the roles that they have to fill within the company, and then assessing to target where there are strengths and weaknesses within the workforce, and then training to upskill those that exact or that are actually in the in the, the roles that they are going to be in day to day, or the ones that they're trying to transition into as they move into career paths. Now, most organizations get breached with a spear phishing attack and a remote access trojan. Yeah. Right? Don't click the link. Don't click the link. I click the link, you click, we all click the link if it's a good link. But people are so used to doing it that the training seems to fail. And then you retrain and you retrain. Do you have an answer? This is the number one exploit vector. Do you have an answer for that? Yeah. I mean, I think the general awareness training is certainly a constant battle and you're battling human nature. And, you know, while I think that a lot of, and we don't do general awareness training, we do the technical training for cybersecurity professionals, but when you look at what general awareness training fails at, and the reason you retrain is because it's a compliance thing. You know, you kind of do it, you sit down your hour. So it's a one-off. It's a one-off, and it's not a persistent part of the culture of the organization. I think that that in particular also comes from this tone set at the top of an organization around what needs to be done and what the expectations are as far as where security could potentially impact, you know, the overall posture of the company or that the makes a lot of sense. I mean, one wrong click and you could be out of business. Exactly, right? but you know, your you know your admin may not know that, or someone in a warehouse somewhere. If you're in Amazon, they might not have that same perspective. So you have to give them that context as opposed to just the one off. You know, take your hour of information security training today. Exactly. Now, do you offer this as? Um, prepackaged or pre-planned uh, tools and videos or is it a whole suite of things are there posters yeah. do you have cartoons i mean <laughs> what do you have to make it fun yeah so we are a whole suite of offerings we cover everything from it credentials to security credentials to skills based training that covers networking fundamentals security engineering threats and vulnerabilities and we configure the solution that we provide to companies based on the roles that they have in the company and what they're trying to actually solve and the way we make it fun, it is video-based. We try and make it efficient. So because everything starts with an assessment, that means that you can opt out of the things that you know how you already do well in. And you focus on the things that you need to, to improve. Um, and everything is done in micro learning. So there is no video over 15 minutes. There are check-ins to make sure that you're actually gaining knowledge and improving in the areas that you scored originally. And then we tie it all together with hands-on labs and learning so that you can apply the skills that you need to actually perform on the job as opposed to just knowledge-based. So the goal is continuous improvement yes. and you can measure that and reduce risk in an organization. Exactly. Now, another area that's really weak, we've got, oh, I don't know, Bob installs, uh, uh, he, he starts up with Salesforce and Jane uses HubSpot and Bill uses, you know, Zoho CRM and they're uploading customer records, but they think they're doing a great job and Jane expenses it on her credit card and HR doesn't care and finance doesn't care. And then, you know, they let go of Bob and he's got his records on the wrong. How do we're calling this shadow IT? It's not on purpose, 
and we're calling this Identity and Access Management 101. I am. Right. Are you helping solve that problem too? We are. You know, it's interesting. When um, I first um, started Cyber Vista, and I am, you know, our founder as well as our CEO, we really were looking to solve pure cybersecurity professionals. And what we found in working with um, clients and customers is that some of the ways that they're using it is exactly to solve that problem. And I did not necessarily think that was how it was going to be used when we first started this. So certain companies are looking at what are essentially shadow IT components, whether it's medical technicians, um, whether it's sales engineers that are working within Salesforce, and they are training them on actual technical cybersecurity skills because it is a part of their job role because of the systems that they're accessing and the data that they're responsible for. It's all about the data and compliance. Yeah. And some data is super valuable, some data isn't, but if you're putting it in the cloud, we need better practices. Right, and if you're putting it in the cloud, you should probably understand where it resides, how it moves, who has access to it, because if you don't understand those principles, then you're not gonna be able to actually take solid action. Can anyone afford CyberVista.net? Anyone can afford it. It is actually very cost effective. It's online specific training and micro learning. We do it for individuals, we do it for companies, but we come in at a fraction of the cost of most traditional training providers. That sounds great. So this has been an awesome hot seat cyber TV interview, cyber defense TV. Is there anything we missed that we wanted to tell our viewers, our listeners? No, I think my only parting shot will be that I can't emphasize enough how important it is to focus on the education and skills ability of the people you have, because ultimately that's going to be what helps mitigate the risks that you have to your enterprise. Sounds great. So. We're going to build human or people firewalls. <laughs> We're going to do it in real time, hopefully. Better education, better training at CyberVista.net. And then come back next time for an exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. Thank you.